All right, welcome to part two of how to use RPG Maker. Um, um, everything I do in these tutorials is going to be in RPG Maker MZ just because it's the most current version, but this will work with RPG Maker MV pretty much exactly the same, and it will in some way or another work with all other earlier versions. I've got VX Ace XP, I've got even 2003, which that one is actually a little weird, but just letting you know, if you've got M MV or a different version, you're still good. So let's go ahead and get into it. Now I'm starting a new project. Uh, make sure you just know where you're saving it. I'm just gonna save it in this tutorial folder. Say okay. Let it do its thing and it'll restart. If you are just opening a fresh project, you won't have this issue, but sometimes it can be hard to find exactly where your project is saved, which I'll show you how to get to in a second. Okay, so we've got a fresh file. Now, uh, first thing, if you ever need to know where your game is, go to game, open folder, and here you can see exactly where it is. Okay, so we're just gonna make this very simple. This is called the RTP, what you're seeing on your screen right now. That stands for Runtime Package. I'm only mentioning this because you're gonna see it in every forum and every discussion or video about RPG Maker. I don't know why they call it that, but uh, it just means this, this interface, like the engine itself. Um, now, you only need to know a couple things to use this, honestly. Um, first, we're going to look at map editing mode, which is this icon up here. Um, and what that does is that enables you to go through here and you've got sprites that you can lay down. So check this out. Um, so let's say you want to add some little trees. This is like an overworld map, so everything's going to be a little smaller. But you just start drawing and there you go. You can also go over here and make a square. Well, this will be a better way to show it. So a square, this will make a circle, or at least as close to a circle as you can get. Uh, Control Z to undo. And this paint bucket will just paint everything. We'll get, we'll get into map editing later. I just want you to know what each of these does. Next up here, so this is map editing. Now we have the event editor. This is what controls your programming. You see this grid that popped up? You can see it go away when you're in map mode. It pops up when you're event. You double click to create a new event and always name them because EV001, when you've got 30 events, is not going to help you find things. So let's say like, I don't know, NPC. And then down here, the image is just who that NPC is or that object. This is for everything. This is for doors, treasure chests, anything that's gonna move like a fire, whatever. So this girl, show text, hello. And you can see down here, trigger action button. So it can happen when the player touches the character, when the player pushes the button. So very quickly, just to show you how easy this is. Walk up to this character, hit the button, hello. It's that easy to make stuff, but anyway. Okay, now it, you're not gonna have this in MV, but up here when you go back to map editing, you've got layers. Basically, it's exactly what it sounds like, it's layers. So, I don't know, let's just, whoops. Let's put this down. Oh, by the way, you can do this too. Like, instead of having to select individual squares, you can just drag and then it'll just copy that in there. So you can see here I've got the base layer selected which is the bottom most layer. Now if we go to the layer above that and I put some mountains, now you can see the mountains are on top of this. And the last thing I wanted to mention is the pen shadow tool. I don't really use this very much but you can see now that looks like there's a shadow over here. All right. So uh, we'll, we'll talk about making sprites and making a map and all that in the next video. I just, I really encourage you to learn how to use this first. You gotta walk before you can run. I know you're excited to get started, but just be patient. <clears throat> Let's go back to the event editor because this is where you're gonna do 90% of your work is in here. Now, I know that this may seem confusing or overwhelming at first, but it's very, very simple. So um, let's let's go back to this NPC we already created her. So again, image, you double click and you can go through all of the stuff in your folders, which again, I showed you how to open that folder. Um, and it has a lot of stuff built in, which is pretty cool. So let's do this creepy, actually do this like 
secret agent looking dude. So let's say you want him to be a roaming NPC. So here you have autonomous movement, which means they will just do their own thing. Fixed means they're not going anywhere. They're just going to stand there. Random is exactly what it sounds like. They're just going to go in random directions. Approach means they will come up to your character. And then custom is mostly for plugins. And um, you can also make your own movement routes, but I recommend saving that for another time. So let's just say random. Now speed is simply how fast they're going to move and frequency is how often they're going to move. So if this is low, they're gonna walk and stop for a really long time before they move again. And highest means they're pretty much gonna stop for half a second and then just keep going and they, they don't stop. So let's just stick to normal. Um, priority above, same or below uh, is basically the layering system for NPCs. It mostly means they're gonna be standing in front of your character or behind your character. I never change this. And then trigger, again, you can activate them, you can just touch them, um, or you can auto run or parallel, which save, save those for later. And um, let's let's do the, the easiest thing to do is text. So double click, show text, now here you've got your character's face. Now he should have a face graphic here. Looking for a guy with sunglasses on. There he is. So here you can put his name, which I don't think is an, an MV feature. It might be an MZ, but let's say agent. <clears throat> and he says, keep an eye out for those suspicious ones dot 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 one thing to note here is this line right here if the text goes past it it will cut off um, so here you can see it fits perfectly but if I type ha 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 which it goes past this line it cuts off so you need to be wary of that and put it on the next line so let's go ahead and try this out And you'll see that he's moving around. He's a little NPC walking around, living his life. And you can talk to him. And that's how easy it is to make NPCs. And I encourage you to follow along. Uh, pause if you need to. Rewind. Do this at your own pace. All right, so we'll get more into the event editor later because there's a lot to do here. And it's just, it needs its own video. Uh, but for now, let's look at the database, which is up here, Tools Database. Um, I think, is this? Yeah, or this button right here, the gear. So here you've got basically all the information for your game. You've got all your characters' names, um, their classes, their levels, what type of weapons they use, all that stuff. Then down here you've got classes. This is all for battle stuff, which again, I, I don't recommend starting your first game with a battle system because it's better to not have a battle system than to have a bad one and this requires a lot of work so just leave that alone um, yeah this is more battle stuff skills items this is for keys for health items if you're gonna have quests or pick up journals all of that is gonna be done here very, very simple, straightforward. You got weapons, armors, types of enemies, all that is battle system. Items is really the only thing you're gonna worry about if you're making a non-combat game. And you got states, again, you don't have to worry about that, or animations, but this is basically where everything's gonna be in here. You've got your other tile sets, which again, we'll get into when we make some maps. Super fun, promise, it's gonna be so exciting. You're gonna be like, whoa! Comet events is something I'm still learning, but from what I know, this is just like if you have something that's constantly happening, for example, opening a door, opening a chest, you want to call common events, but I'm still like kind of figuring those out. So I guess we'll learn together. Now, system is cool because you can change a lot of stuff here. Um, you can change your currency for it's defaulted as G, but you could say like dollars, you know, or whatever you want. Um, this is your title screen image and you can put like a, a border, you can make it, ooh, that's nice. Look at that nice little beach right there. So you can change this to whatever suits your game. Um, window color, you can adjust that as well. 
So you've got two options here for your battle system. You can do front view or side view. So front view is kind of like earthbound style and side view is like classic Final Fantasy. And then you've got turn based, time progress or uh, active or wait. So active is like where the little bar has to fill up. Um, here in your options, you've got a whole bunch of different stuff. You can turn off show player followers. So if you've got more people in your party, they won't appear. It'll just be you by yourself. Uh, EXP for reserve members, so if someone levels up, everybody levels up, it's really nice. Um, show number of key items, huh. We got autosave now, which again, I think is an MZ thing. But um, yeah, you got airships, we'll get into all that, maybe. <laughs> and here is where you can change the music of uh, the common event. So your title screen, your battle theme, victory, fanfare, game over, etc. And then uh, down here, you've got... Um, all your sound effects so like oh yeah um, for your first game if you're just starting out I wouldn't worry too much about it but I would highly highly recommend you either buy or make your own music and your own artwork if you can because like if your game looks and sounds like RPG Maker even if these sound effects are new to you People have heard them a million times, trust me. Uh, moving on, system two, you can change the tile size, which I'll get into later. Um, this game is very by the book. As you can see by the grids back here, it needs to be the exact size. You can make your game bigger, um, change a bunch of stuff, but this is kind of more advanced nitpick. You can also change your fonts here, which they do need to be in your folders, but yeah. Anyway, that's the database. Oh, one last thing that you can do that's pretty cool is terms. So let's say, just for fun, you're making a game about a stoner selling weed, and you want to change all this fantasy stuff into something that fits it. So like, you could change attack to smoke, or you could change guard to, I don't know, vape, whatever. And all that terminology will automatically be put into effect. So your HP you know, could be, well, actually, HP high points for that would be pretty funny, but you know what I mean. So HP could be, like, sexiness. So if your sexiness is full, you know, or you take damage to your sexiness during battle, that kind of thing. You can change it to literally all of this you want, even buy, sell, equip, all of that. So, like, new game, uh, let's say, new party. So check this out. I changed new game to new party. You start a new game. Let's have a new party. Oh yeah. Okay. So you get the idea. That's the uh, that's the database. Um, now actors. Okay. Up here you can make your own characters. This is a really cool tool if you're just starting out. It's a character generator. So choose the type of face, um, type of hair hair color. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I know you're going to pause this video and play with it if you've never seen this before because it's a lot of fun. You probably already did that and you're not even listening to me until you unpause it. You're like, oh, how did he know? Wow. It's like he's done this before. So there you go. You can make your own characters. Um, I'll, I'll show the proper way to like export them and set them up another time. We'll, we'll get to all this stuff. I just, again, need you to learn how to use the engine first before we get to the fun stuff. Um, and in a nutshell, that is pretty much the RTP of RPG Maker. The interface, all of the features. Um, I know I went really fast, but, you know, I just wanted to show you what it has to offer. And now we can move on to the fun stuff. So um, if you want to continue this series, we're going to move into part three. We're going to make a character. All right. Thanks for watching so far. And uh, let's let's go to the next one.